So, if you had a $100 credit for a single bottle of Scotch whiskey at the whiskey shop of your choice, what are you gonna choose? Today I'm gonna give you my list of the top 10 bottles that I'd look out for in ranked order to spend my $100 right now. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here, with you, on Whiskey Whereabouts. So take a walk with me through the virtual aisles of this figurative whiskey shop while I look out for the best bottle to redeem my $100 bill for. And the first bottle I'm going to be on the lookout for is from Isla, and it's from Kilhoman, and it's called the San Egg. This is a non-H statement whiskey. Kilhoman is still a young distillery, but it comes in the standard Kilhoman craft presentation, 46%, no color added, no chill filtration, and this has been aged in 70% Oloroso sherry casks and 30% bourbon casks. It is peated from Isla, and that can be a fantastic complementary combination with the sherry sweet and the Isla peat, and this is a great example of the sort of craft presentation that they are known for, and I'd be pretty happy to come home with this bottle, especially since it doesn't even take my full hundred dollars. This should be about an $85 bottle, and like I said, I'd be pretty happy with this one, but I am on the lookout to see, can I do any better? So the next whiskey I'm going to be on the lookout for is also from Isla. This time it's from Brook Lottie, and it's the Isla Barley 2013. This one should be pretty much in the same price range as the Kilhoman that we already talked about, $80, $85. And this is a 50% ABV whiskey, and although it is also from Isla, this is not peated. Brook Lottie whiskeys are not peated, they're Peated line is marketed under the branding Port Charlotte. This is Brook Lottie Isla Barley, and it's 100% bourbon matured, but 25% of the whiskey that goes into that vatting after it's been bourbon matured is finished in French wine casks in an eight year whiskey. And if you are familiar with that classic Laddie, the powder blue bottle, it's also 50% non peated whiskey from um, Brook Lottie. This is similar to it although sort of next level, this one comes in a clear glass bottle and it has the locally Isla sourced barley going into it and very similar to Kilhoman with a very craft presentation where they do almost everything, almost as much as Kilhoman does on site at Brook Lottie. And so this is a very, very nice whiskey with the non-peated aspect as an alternative to that uh, first kill home that we looked at in this same price category, but maybe I am looking for a little bit of a different lane here. Maybe I want more sherry flavor. Maybe I'm looking for the, the sherry bomb. What's available to me in the shop? I'm going to scan around. I'm going to look and I'm going to, to, to stop when I see a bottle from a Highland distiller. And this one is from Glendronic and it is a 15 year whiskey revival. And this time we're gonna have to spend every bit of our $100 bill. This one may creep over 101, 102, maybe it's right there on the money. It's only a 46% whiskey, still respectable. It's gonna be Pedro Jimenez, uh, PX, Sherry, and Oloroso. Sherry matured, and it is going to kind of deliver that bigger sherry flavor. Um, than anything that we've talked about so far. So this is a pretty solid bottle in today's market for this price point. But uh, before we go any further, I do want to just, just point out and mention when I do these lists, prices vary wildly of whiskey from shop to shop, state to state, and from country to country. And so I try uh, to confirm my prices that are current as of this recording in May of 2023 and try to make sure that the bottles that I put in these categories are reliably available and not generally commanding a price of 110, 115 and then maybe one shop, one retailer has it squeezed under. So 
This one's right at the 100, maybe a couple dollars, give or take, here or there, but that's about as far as we're gonna get in terms of stretching that $100. And the next whiskey that we're gonna talk about is a little bit cheaper, or should be. It shouldn't take the full 100. This is probably a $90 whiskey. We're back on Isla again, and this time we're over at Bunahaben. And this one is called the Toichikada. And this is a non-age statement whiskey, and like the most of the non-age statement whiskeys from Bunahaben, it has this Gaelic name, and it means smoky too. And so that should sort of get your attention a little bit. We're talking about Bunahaven and we're talking about smoky Bunahaven and most of the you know, sort of default Bunahaven is non-peated despite being from Isla. This one is peated and it's a non h statement whiskey, 46.3% and this one is bourbon and sherry matured. So it may be one that's a little bit harder to find than certainly the 12 year and a couple of the others on the list, but it's one to look out for if that profile is appealing to you. The next whiskey I'm gonna look out for after this is gonna be one where I'm looking to stretch my $100 bill toward getting a little bit more whiskey for my dollar, a little bit higher ABV. And so far we've hit 50 with that, uh, with one of the whiskeys that we talked about, but I'm looking for a little bit more. And the bottle I'm gonna look for to deliver it here is from Glen Goyne. And it's the Glen Goyne cask strength, and I think we're up to batch number nine. This one, again, is gonna be right on the money at the $100. But for that $100, you're gonna get 59.2% ABV whiskey, cask strength whiskey. Um, it's pretty complicated sort of cask configuration that they use, but it's basically 30% first fill sherry, 50% uh, refill sherry, and the remaining 20% is ex-bourbon casks. And that's a lot of sherry casks, but it's not really a sherry bomb. Um, it's it's uh, fairly complex. Glen Glen claims they have the longest distillation in Scotland. And um, this is all around a pretty good value for a non-age statement, but cask strength whiskey at $100 in today's market. And that Glen Glen is gonna get us through the first half of the list. So we're at the halfway point now, and we're crossing over into the top five and from here on out there's gonna be a lot of personal preference that's going to decide where the whiskey is gonna fall in a ranked order and from here on out the whiskeys that we're looking at are pretty serious whiskeys for a hundred dollars in today's market and the first whiskey in the top five number five on the list is from Campbelltown and this is a whiskey from the Springbank distillery and it is not Springbank. At Springbank, they make three different branded single malt whiskeys. Springbank, which is moderately peated. They make a whiskey called Hazelburn, which is not peated. And then they make a whiskey called Long Row, which is a heavily peated whiskey. And we are talking about the Long Row, which is a non-age statement whiskey. In addition to being more heavily peated PPM than Springbank, there's a couple other key differences here, even though it comes out of the same distillery. In Springbank, they have a uh, unusual configuration of three stills and they use them in different ways depending on which of the whiskeys they're making and basically they explain that spring make is distilled two and a half times the long row only sort of the standard double distill that we see in most distilleries and unlike um, spring make 10 spring make 15 which has some and then all uh, sherry uh, cask maturation this is a all bourbon cask matured whiskey so it is Springbank adjacent. It is not just more peated Springbank, but it's coming from the incredibly, incredibly popular Springbank Distillery, which is popular because of their traditional sort of craft approach to everything and their focus on quality. And this whiskey is coming out of that same distillery. You're not getting an age statement, but you are getting um, that heavily peated whiskey from that distillery as an alternative to Springbank, which, spoiler alert, is not gonna be on this list. I don't think you can reliably buy Springbank 10 year for less than $100 anymore. I think you can, best case, get it just a little over 100, and so it's not going to be here. And there's another bottle here 
It's a lot easier to get your hands on than the long row. They don't make a lot of long row. Um, but uh, this whiskey is from Isla again, Ardbeg. It's the Ukadal, and this is going to cost the $100. This is a 54.2% non-age statement whiskey from Ardbeg, and it is the sister whiskey to the uh, Cory Bracken. And in a blind test, I generally prefer the Cory Bracken, but they are very, very close. It's one and one A, and the Cory Bracken can't be bought at this price point anymore. It's a more than $100 whiskey, but you can still get the Ugadal, which has a real smoky, sweet, sort of honey, kind of grilled quality. It's bourbon and sherry matured. And to some, that makes it a little bit more approachable uh, than its sister, whiskey and this is a whiskey that's not that hard to find it's pretty readily available but it to me has a pretty killer flavor profile at that high abv strength makes it pretty pretty solid value tough to pass up in this market at that price point but while i'm starting to talk myself into taking home this ogadal I may be walking by some other bottles. I may be tempted to put it down if I see another bottle from Campbelltown. And again, it's not Springbank. And this one doesn't even come from the Springbank Distillery. It comes from the Glengyle Distillery. But as you may know, that distillery is owned by the same company that owns the Springbank Distillery. It's from Springbank's sister distillery. And this bottle is a 12 year age statement bottle, Kilcarran 12. I reviewed this on the channel. I'll link to my review at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it. And it's a 46% ABV whiskey. It is 70% bourbon. It is 30% sherry. It's got a killer nose and it is a great sort of alternative or compliment if you are really struggling to get your hands on some Springbank. It's a great whiskey on its own and it's gonna be a lot tougher to get your hands on than an Ardbeg Oogadal. Not impossible, it's out there, and it should be right at $98, $99, so you should be able to get this one within the price category, and if I walked out with this bottle, I'd probably be pretty happy with my purchase, but as I'm walking to the register with my Kilcarran 12, I stop short because I see on the shelf another bottle this time, we're in Speyside at the Glenallochie Distillery. And here we have Glenallochie's 10-year. This is a cask strength whiskey. This bottle, my bottle, is batch seven. And batch seven has been aged in Pedro Jimenez, Oloroso Sherry Cask, Rioja Wine Casks, and Virgin Oak Casks. And it is a 54.8% whiskey that does not come off as hot at all. It's got a very, very nice rich, sweet, round, balanced flavor. And these are easier and easier to get. I see these more and more on the shelves, so it's not as much about the rarity, but it is certainly more rare than some of the whiskeys that we've talked about on this list so far. And I'd be very, very tempted to take home this sweet Speyside cask strength whiskey um, with my $100. It's gonna take the full 100 to buy this bottle but I should be able to get out of the store, give or take a couple dollars, right with my $100 bill, and I'd be happy to do so. So this time, as I'm reaching for my wallet, I stop short a final time with the number one bottle on my list, and this time, what's gonna catch my attention is this heavy embossed glass bottle from, once again, the Brooklady Distillery, but this time, we're talking about the Port Charlotte, we're talking about the peated version of Brooklady. This is actually a bottle of the 10 year, but the bottle that I'm gonna be tempted to buy is the Isla Barley uh, 2013, which is the one you should be able to get for this price, even a few dollars cheaper than some of the bottles we've talked about. This one should be able to be bought for $91, $92, somewhere around there. It's gonna be a 75% bourbon cask, 25% French wine cask, matured whiskey, it's 50% ABV, like the Brooklady's we've been talking about. It's an eight-year whiskey. There's a different cask configuration on the newest version of this whiskey, the 2014. That's going to be bourbon, French wine, and virgin oak. And 
I find the the 2013 or the dated uh, Isla Barley's to be a little bit more tropical. Um, the fruit note kind of helps me keep them straight, and so the 10 year is a little bit more uh, lemony. The um, citrusy, a fantastic whiskey, um, especially at this price. The craft presentation, the locally sourced barley. Um, this is the second Brooklady bottling. We have one of each, one from each side of the coin, the Brooklady, the Port Charlotte that's on the list. And I think that just kind of kind of shows, at least in my opinion, uh, Brooklady's kind of killing it right now. And the Port Charlottes are all all pretty, pretty solid. And at less than the hundred dollars, the uh, I Love Barley Port Charlotte is going to be a pretty fantastic bottle that you're going to be happy with if you are into a peated Isla whiskey. And so that is my list. And I would love to hear about what you would redeem your hundred dollars for. What is the bottle, but make sure that it actually can be bought for this price point um, somewhere um, and let me know in the comments what uh, what would be your choice um, in the meantime if this has uh, been an interesting video I'd love it if you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos that are coming out uh, with this button and in the meantime you can check out this review right here